This symbol is one of the most important symbols in all symbology. It is the most prominent symbol on our one dollar bill. It is one of the most viewed symbols on earth. And very few people understand what it really means. I'm going to break it completely down from top to bottom and go through each element and attempt to explain it as, as fully and as clearly as possible. This is the symbol of all the mystery traditions. Okay, Very simply, it is the symbol of all occultism. Of course, it is Egyptian in its thematic representation, and its symbolic representation, it is Egyptian, and there is a reason for that. We see the elements of the symbol being the words Anuit Coeptus at the top. Then we have a pyramid with its capstone missing. The capstone is cut off, so it is an incomplete pyramid. Atop the pyramid, as a two-dimensional slit in the sky, it could be seen, a two-dimensional opening or a rift in the sky. From behind that, we see an eye. And that, that uh, eye is bathed in light. The pyramid is comprised of 13 courses of brick, the bottom of which has a date inscribed on it in Roman numerals, nine Roman numerals. There is then a uh, a sash with the words Novus Ordo Seclorum written on it at the bottom. So we have to understand each element. Each element is here not by accident, it is there by design and the makers of this of this sigil, because that's what this is. This is a sigil which is comprised of many symbols. Put nothing on it by accident and everything has a meaning in this. So Let's start to break down the symbols one at a time. Anuit Coeptus is Latin. It means, Anuit means to favor or to look favorably upon. Coeptus is an enterprise, an undertaking, or a project, a work, a work in progress, you could say. So Anuit Coeptus means he favors, could mean she favors, it favors, our project. It, he favors our work. He favors our work in progress. Okay? So, he favors our work is a good translation. Novus Ordo Seclorum is often hotly contested as to its meaning. Uh, novus means new, Ordo means order or way, and Seclorum is the debated word. So, I go to a, dic a Latin dictionary and I look up the word Seclorum, S A E C O O. L O R U M. This is because people will say seclorum means of the ages. So I'm looking up the word cyclorum, and that means age, generation, people born at a time, race, present time, or age, century. So if this if this phrase said the new order of the ages, we should see an A in between that S and E there. It would say Novus Ordo Cyclorum. But it says seclor. So clearly that's not the definition. Many people will say that that's what it means. It does not mean of the ages. Okay? The word seclorum is put into a Latin dictionary. And then you see it is a word modification, a truncation. CL is derived from CUL. So an internal CL might be rendered by CUL, thus giving us seculorum and seculum seculi is a noun that means world universe secular temporal earthly or worldly affairs cares or temptation so clearly I think this can be solved and agreed upon once and for all so we don't have to hear this incorrect connotatively incorrect translation the new order of the ages this phrase clearly says new world order. And that's it. That's what it says. Let's lay this to rest once and for all. Okay? So, he favors our work, the new world order. 
and you have an eye in the triangle looking out from another dimension of space into our realm. The light is pouring through the scene from that realm, and a pyramid is being built. So, he favors our work, the New World Order. What is, who favors the work, what is the work, and what is the New World Order? So, clearly, this is the being that favors the work. This project is the work that's being done. Okay, this is the incomplete project. This is the date that the project is, could be begun or finished, depending on how we look at the seal. So, we have to understand a little bit about Egyptian cosmology and the main solar god, the solar disk, which we looked at as, as Horus, as, as Ra, Sept is the dark incarnation of it. Really, all of these principles could be encapsulated as one solar god known as Aten or Aton. Depending on the spelling, it could be spelled A T O N or A T E N. So, Akhenaten of 18th Dynasty Egypt was actually named after this. He's a pharaoh of 18th Dynasty. He brought in the concept into Egyptian cosmology of a one God that is the, the, uh, the overarching ruling aspect of everything, known as the Aten. And his, he named himself after this God. Akhenaten means the spirit of the Aten, the, the solar God. So that is the, the uh, being here, the Aten. Now that could mean a couple of things depending on how we look at this symbol. But let's just let it be seen as it is the solar principle, the solar god, the god of light, the bringer of light. So it could be also seen as the word Lucifer. Lucifer comes from two Latin words, lux meaning light, and fare meaning to bear or to bring or to carry. So it is the bringer the carrier of light. Now, this could mean two different things. We have to understand that Lucifer and the Aten are the same basic principle, the same symbolic principle, and they are essentially, they are a dual God. There is a light aspect of the Sun God, the one that brings true light of awareness. And then there is the dark aspect of light. So one can be truly illuminated and really possess the light, really possess the knowledge. And then there is one who can be born into the dark light. Those who have knowledge of how things really work, but the way they're using it is for the ego. Being my will be done because I view myself as God and separate from everyone else and I am out there to manipulate and rule them. So either way you look at that symbol there, it is the Aten or Lucifer. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at that symbolically as, as positive or negative and I will go over both interpretations, both the positive and negative. However, it can both of, in both aspects, this entity could be seen as Aten or Lucifer. Keep that in mind. If you take the compass and square symbol and place the apex at the top of this sim symbol and the base at the same base level where, where, where uh, the pyramid meets the ground, you're going to see a very interesting thing emerge. If we just trace the five points of the compasses and squares, the two compasses, the two edges of the square, and then the middle part that, that both share, the, the, the line of symmetry between them. So we go down the compass edges, and we see that the compass points point to two letters. The, the two end letters of this sash, Okay, N and M. N from Novus, M in Seclorum. 
Then we go up the place where the square is used to measure from, the inside edge of the square. And we see that that also points to two letters, and they are also both on the opposite edge of this phrase, anuit coeptus. So we have the A in anuit and the S in coeptus. And now we come down the, the uh, horizontal axis of symmetry. And we see it reaches one letter that is exactly in the middle of this sash, the O from Urdo. These five letters, if rearranged, are an anagram for the word Mason, M-A-S-O-N. And this is the symbol of all masonry. It is the symbol of all builders. And who are the builders? We all are the builders. We are all collectively on this planet the co-creators of our collective experience. Whether we are doing that creation unconsciously or consciously creating our experience, we are the builders of this world. And this is what we've built it into, what we currently have right now. So, who are the builders? We are the builders. But there's two different types of masons. See, there are masons that build with stone. They build the pyramid upward. They're building with stone. If you connect these five symbols as they are connotatively used in this seal, they form an inverted skewed pentagram. And an inverted skewed pentagram, if you look into a dark occultic symbology, is always used as a symbol of pacts. It's a symbol of pacts, of promises made, to be something to be fulfilled, to be delivered upon completion of something else. So the, again, we saw that these four arms represent the material world, depicted as the, the um, upward pointing pyramid, the brick, the physical object, and they are crushing the spirit, the fifth element, into the ground, burying it under the weight of the pyramid. See, the dark builders, the dark masons, those who are building toward a world of male domination, the blade. See, they're building with bricks. The bricks are people who are trapped in physical five sense reality and left brain prisonhood. They are those who can not change. They have one form and it's hardened. A brick was once malleable clay that could be shaped, molded, take different forms. It flows easily. Change comes easily to it. But when it is baked in the left brain, solar, male dominator consciousness, it becomes hard and immobile and immovable. It becomes a brick. And that's what the male dominator world is being built with. The bricks baked into one form. The unit form, those in unit form, cannot see what is, not see. They are, they cannot see, they are not sees, see? They are baked into one form, the brick, okay? And they're, they're being used as elements to build the blade world. And the blade world will be ruled by those who are in the light. They are the blade, the male dominator sorcerers. They have the light, but everyone else is in ignorance. And when you complete this structure, the light goes out from the scene. See, they're building the blade. If you complete this structure in brick, they have all the light, and the entire world is bathed in darkness. That, in that symbol, 
The Aten or Lucifer represents the sorcerer and he is completely trapped in ego. The ego-bound consciousness. It's the I in the triangle. I am God, the sorcerer says to the world. And I will make everyone in this world and the entire world in my own image and likeness. But I will have all the light and the light will be blocked out to those in ignorance and in one form. And the male dominator world will be born into existence and it will bathe the world forever in darkness. That's the negative connotation of this symbol. See, you'll notice it's the blade without the chalice. See, these other three points make the chalice, but it's gone, it's ghosted. Just like it's been ghosted through human sacrifice, through the cremation of care, right? It's been ghosted through the, the removal of the sacred feminine from the Trinity and through not caring about what goes on in the world. The sacred feminine is removed, it's, it's ghosted, but the male principle is embodied in stone. And that's the project, that the, the New World Order project that the Dark Masons, the builders with brick, are building into manifestation. Now, uh, there is a light side of this symbol. Again, he favors our project, the New World Order. If the true God of creation, the true bringer of light, the awakened neocortex, the prefrontal cortex, the opening of the third eye, the stone the builders rejected, the Christ consciousness, so to speak, the true bringer of light, right? The true aspect of Aten, the solar mind, right? If we, as the other kind of Mason, are trying to come, are, are trying to do the work that he favors, the true bringer of light, the true God of creation, and create the positive new world order, our job as the builders of this project is to remove the brick from the top down a little bit of time from those who we can help to work smaller groups gradually removing and helping people to change in larger and larger and larger groups and if that pyramid is raised to the ground is removed from the scene there's nothing to block out that light of creation and it comes down and joins with the earth. So the earth is not bathed in darkness of the male dominator blade world. Instead, it's bathed in light because the bricks are gone. Those who cannot change are gone. They've made the change, the metamorphosis, the transfiguration, the transformation in consciousness. And they've been raised to a higher level of awareness. So that's the, op the opposite, the positive New World Order. Masons often tear stone down. And the light mason, want, the light builder, the light worker, wants to tear the stone down so the light comes down and join up with the earth to create the positive New World Order. And in that aspect, this is a powerful, magnificent symbol of the true mystery traditions. The object is to remove that pyramid of male domination and bring the light down to the earth. So we see that this is the symbol of Solomon encoded into it. The male aspect, here's the yin, uh, I'm sorry, the yang, light aspect of consciousness, combined with the feminine yin, dark aspect of consciousness, to create the seal of Solomon. As above, so below. The hermetic principle encoded into the seal, the seal of Solomon, so depicted there. But it is the body unified with the spirit within the temple of man, the mind, the sun and the moon, the left and the right brain, to 
create the stone, the philosopher's stone, the opening of the third eye, the pineal gland known as the stone the builders rejected because the dark builders reject that light of awareness and consciousness and they are trying to block it out by completing that pyramid in stone.